So for the artists in LA who are interested particularly in perception and light and environmental effects more than making discrete objects, they landed on using transparent, translucent, and reflective materials to kind of create an environment and make a person more aware of their own surroundings. And they used materials that they borrowed from the aerospace industry and from commercial signage and even from automotive culture. And these included um, spray lacquers that were used on cars and surfboards, um, different types of resins and acrylics that were used in the commercial industry and even in the military industry. And they were most attracted to the transparency and reflective qualities of these materials and how from one angle they would have a certain aspect or appearance and from another angle they might look completely different. I found this polyester resin as a little kit for craft makers and started making some very small pieces. I was excited about those and I was doing different shapes and experimenting with it and then it grew and grew and grew. That material what had never been available before because it was declassified for World War II. And somehow it made its way to these shops. Many of us found it, six or seven of us or more, found at the same time. Because of its toxicity, it was very difficult to use. But this, is, this was the draw. These materials were so seductive. You could add colored dyes to them. You could manipulate them. Many of them self-destructed if they were over or under catalyzed. But you had to, I learned early on that you had to be extremely careful or they would control you, the artist. There was really no one to guide any of us at that time. So we just went off to our studios and we worked with it until we got something that seemed to work. And then we would expand on it and get bigger and bigger. 